In this video we're going to learn how to integrate the Tailwind CSS framework with the Django Crispy Forms package for developing forms in Django. And we're going to see how to take a very bad looking form such as this one here and by adding two lines of code to the template that renders that form we're going to see how we can improve things a lot just by using this Crispy template filter and then when we go back to the page and refresh you can see how much better that looks. So we're going to dive into that in this video and see how to use Django Crispy Forms with a Tailwind CSS template pack. Now before we get started, if you're enjoying this content and want to support the channel, we have a coffee page. There's a link in the description and we've nearly achieved this goal now. Many thanks to everybody who's contributed to that. And if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Let's dive in. Now I've got a simple Django project open in VS Code here and you can see we have an empty forms.py module. We're going to create a form very soon in the video because we're going to be working with Django Crispy Forms so obviously we need a form to work with. But what I'm going to do to start with is go to the documentation for Tailwind. So just a very quick overview of what Tailwind and Django Crispy Forms are. First of all we have Tailwind which allows you to rapidly build modern websites and it does this by providing a lot of CSS classes that you can then put on your HTML elements and you can very quickly build out pages using Tailwind. We're going to look at that in this video and Django Crispy Forms is a package for Django and specifically we're going to look at this template pack for Django Crispy Forms. It's called Crispy Tailwind and what that allows you to do is style up forms that you define in Django using the Tailwind CSS framework. And it's very easy to do as we saw in the intro, you can use this crispy filter in order to do that. And we're gonna work through an example in this video. Now, if we scroll down here to the section on how to use this, you can see that the current functionality allows you to use that crispy filter, or you can also load the crispy forms tags and then use the crispy template tag rather than the template filter if you have any customization on the form classes. We're gonna see two examples later on, one with the filter here, and one with this template tag. So the parent package is Django Crispy Forms and Crispy Tailwind is an example of a template pack for Django Crispy Forms. And there are template packs for different CSS frameworks, for example, Bootstrap 4, and there are also template packs for Bootstrap 5, Bulma and other frameworks. So let's go back to VS Code and in this video in the forms.py file, we're going to define a contact form that we're going to work with. And that's going to inherit from the Django form class. We also, of course, have a model form class and that would be used together with a Django model, but we're not going to define any models just to keep things simple in this video. So we have a class called contact form. What I'm going to do is go to this blog post. So I wrote up this blog post based on this content and we can get some snippets of code from this. So you have a link to that in the description of the video. And I'm going to copy the code for this form class. I'm going to paste that into VS Code. So once we've pasted that in, we can go over this. So first of all, we're defining some choices for the reason that you want to submit this contact form. For example, a general inquiry or tech support and so on. And that's attached to this choice field that we have here. And you can see that the choices are being added here using this choices keyword argument. We also have different fields for the name of the person submitting the form, as well as their email address, and that's an instance of a forms.email field. We have a subject, and that's a car field, as well as a message, which is also a car field, but we're overriding the widget on that car field. And we're telling Django basically here that we want this to be a larger widget, the text area element in HTML. And we're attaching a number of rows here, as you can see. And finally, we have subscribe. This is a Boolean field that's going to determine whether the user wants to subscribe to this imaginary website. Maybe the site has a newsletter or something else. So that's going to be a Boolean field where the user will tick a box or they will leave it unticked. Now, the idea in Django, when you define a form, each field in the form is going to be mapped to an HTML form element. So for example, it might be an input of type text when we have a car field. And for a Boolean field, it might be a checkbox and so on. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to views.py and we're going to add this form to the context and display it in this template that we have here. This is currently a very basic template, but we want to add the form to the context and render it out here. And we're going to do that now by going to views.py. At the top here from core.forms, we're going to import the contact form that we just defined. And then we have a context dictionary. I'm going to add a key to that called form. And the value for this is going to be an instance of the contact form. So we're adding that contact form 
to the context. So it's very easy in Django to define a form and then make it available in the context for your template here. And finally, in the template, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding an H1 tag at the top that says contact us, because this is a contact form. And then below that, we're gonna add a form. So it's gonna be a form. When we submit the form, we want to send a post request and I'll close that element out. When we have a form that sends a post request in Django, we need to attach the CSRF token. So we're gonna add that using this template tag. And then finally, we can render the form out here and add a button to submit the form. So let's add the button. And this form that we're rendering using a template variable, that's gonna take this form that we have in the context using this key. That was the instance of the contact form. And it's gonna basically dump that out to the page. Now that's not gonna look very good. So I'm gonna go to the page that we have. Now beforehand it just said hello, but when we refresh this page, you can see we now have the contact form and it doesn't look great. For example, we don't have any margin between the fields and the fields themselves don't look ideal. So we're gonna use Django Crispy Forms and notably the Crispy Tailwind template pack in order to fix this and make this form look a lot better. So how do we start the process of doing that? Let's start by going to Tailwind's documentation and we're going to install Tailwind into the project and we're gonna do that in the very basic way that's not really suitable for production just because it's the easiest and the quickest for the video. So we can go to this page here and I'm gonna leave a link to this below the video and we can grab the script tag that we have here from the Play CDN. We're gonna copy that and go back to the Django Project's base template and in the base template, let's paste that into the head tag. So that's gonna bring Tailwind into this project and then we can use classes such as this one here to add things like margin to different elements in the DOM. So let's test this out now. If we go back to the page and refresh the page, you can see that things have changed. We're now using Tailwind styles and by default, Tailwind is gonna override the default styles that the browser provides. So even though we didn't add any styles except this margin eight here, Tailwind has changed the look and feel of the site already. Now this form doesn't look great at all. We don't even know where the fields are here. There, there is no visibility of these fields. So we're gonna to need to change that. But what I'm going to do to start with is go back to the project and let's go to index.html. Now we have a contact us header here. I'm gonna add some Tailwind styles to this. So we add some classes to the HTML element and we're telling the element that we want large text. So we're using the text 4XL class. We want the text to be bold because it's a header and we want to give this some margin bottom of eight. So let's now save this and go back to the page and you can see the header is now appearing at the top and it looks more like a header. It's more distinguished from the form below. And the other thing we want to do on this page is change the styles of this submit button. At the moment, this doesn't even look like a button at all. So what we're gonna do is go to this Flowbyte page and I'll leave a link to this in the video description. We've also got this on the blog post, these styles that we're gonna use. So just to keep things simple, I'm gonna grab the styles from this default button. And there's quite a lot of classes here. And that's because it's also applying some styles, for example, on hover and on focus and on different actions that happen to the button. So I'm gonna copy these classes and then I'm gonna go back to VS Code and we're going to add these to the submit button. Once we've done that, we can go back to our page and when we refresh this page, you can see the submit button is now appearing and it looks a bit better. We can add some margin top to this button as well. So let's go back here and I'm gonna add that right at the beginning. Let's say margin top of four. Once we do that, we're gonna see that the button is moved down a little bit, so it's a bit further away from the fields in the form. So we've styled the header and the button using Tailwind. We know that that's working. Let's now install Django Crispy Forms and also the Crispy Tailwind template pack. We can get the installation command on this documentation, so let's grab this. And if we go back to VS Code, I'm gonna to go to the terminal here and we can paste that in. And when we install Crispy Tailwind, that's automatically going to install Django Crispy Forms as well because that's a dependency of this package. Now, once we've installed Crispy Tailwind, let's go back to the documentation. We need to add both Crispy Forms and Crispy Tailwind to installed apps. So let's start by doing that. So let's go to the settings.py file in Django and we're gonna go down to the installed apps. And at the bottom, I'm gonna paste in Crispy Forms and Crispy Tailwind, which is the template pack. We need to reference that template pack as well. So let's copy these two settings that we have and we're gonna paste these in just below installed apps. So the crispy allowed template packs and also the crispy template pack settings are both being set to Tailwind. Now, as the documentation says, once you've done that, you can use this crispy tag 
And in order to use that on your form, you need to load the Tailwind filters. So let's go back to index.html. That's the template that contains our form. At the top, we're gonna to load those filters. And then on the form itself, we can use the crispy template filter. Once we've added that, we can start the Django development server. And we're gonna go back to the page containing our form. Now we've added the crispy template filter to this form. When we refresh the page, you can see that it's changed the styles completely. We can now see the fields in the form. And you can see some of the examples from previous videos that I've done here, such as make a cup of tea, very British example there. So what we have now is a form that we can use and it looks a lot better than it did before. And here's a choice field. You can see the choices that we've got here that were defined in the forms.py file in this list of tuples here that we added to the reason field. So our form is looking a lot better. What we can do now is customize this further. For example, rather than taking up the full width of the screen, we could constrain that to let's say half the size of the screen and we could also adjust that so that on mobile screens it takes up the full size whereas on larger screens such as the one I'm on it does not take up as much space and it might be centered on the page. Now what I'm going to do is add a div element around our content so let's go back to the index.html file. We've got the content here and I'm going to add a div that surrounds both the header and also the form and all of the fields in that form. And we're going to add some Tailwind styles to this div element. And I'm going to paste these classes into the div. If you want to grab this content, you can look at the blog post where we have these classes. And what this is going to do is it's going to set some different padding styles on the x-axis for different screen sizes. For example, padding 6 on smaller screens and when we hit the large screen, it's gonna be padding X8. And we also have MX Auto, so that's gonna take the content within this div, and it's gonna center on the page across the X axis. Now what I'm gonna do just to show this off is save the form, and we're gonna go back to the page here, and let's refresh the page now. And you can see on this larger screen, the form is no longer taking up the full width of the page. Instead, we have now constrained the size of this, and we're doing that using the max width 2XL class. So the maximum width of this form is going to be equal to the 2XL size in Tailwind. And because of the MX Auto class, the form is now centered on the page. Now I'm gonna to go to the developer tools and we can look at how this form would look like on a mobile page. So we can go to this icon here. When we click that, we get taken to this view here that allows us to look at how the form will appear on a mobile. So if I select one of these different mobile examples here, for example, iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can see that this is how the form would look on that device. So on the smaller screens, such as this one, the form is taking up the full width, but on a larger screen, such as the one I have here, we have it centered on the page and it's not taking up as much space. So that's how we can take the form styles that have been added to the form by Django Crispy Forms and by the template back. And we can surround that with a container element that constrains the size of the form. Now we're going to finish the video by looking at layouts in Django Crispy Forms. Now that is a class, the layout class, which allows you to change the way that form fields are rendered. It allows you to set the order of the fields, it allows you to wrap them in divs or other structures, and it allows you to add HTML and set IDs, classes, and attributes to your different elements on the form. Now it does this by writing a custom form template using programmatic layouts. Now I know that not everybody likes this approach of defining your form layout in your Python code. I think there is an argument out there that the best way to do this is to keep presentation content in your Django templates where possible rather than adding this to the Python code. So if you have an opinion on that, drop it in the comments. But just for completion, I'm gonna show how to use a layout class in this video. So what we do when we define a Django form class is we define a constructor method, and that's the dunder init method. And in that method, we define a helper, and that's by instantiating the form helper that comes from crispyforms.helper. And then to the helper, we can add a layout. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the blog post and I'm gonna scroll down to the section on adding customization or advanced customization with Crispy Forms layouts. And I'm gonna copy the code here because it's gonna be much quicker if I'm able to do this. And let's go back to forms.py and just below the form fields, I'm gonna paste in this code and we can go over this code. Now we also need to bring in some imports. So that's these ones here at the top. 
going to copy this and import these into the module. So what we're doing in the dunder init method, first of all we call the superclasses init method and then we're storing that self.helper variable as an instance of the form helper. Then we're going to set some fields on that, for example we can set fields on the form class itself. So we're going to set that to border p8, we're going to see what that does. And then we define a layout on the form helper class. So that's a layout instance. And what I'm doing here is defining a div that has some CSS classes. And those classes have Flexbox on medium or larger screens. And on those screens, we're also adding the justify between class. And these are from Tailwind. Within that div container, we are defining two fields. So first of all, another div containing the name field and also the reason field. Now remember that these were fields on the form, so we're referencing those fields by name, and we can also add CSS classes to the div that we have here. So basically we're building up a layout of divs here. The top level one is a container, and these divs here are going to have our form fields built in, and we can add CSS classes to these layouts. Now the purpose of this is to get the name and the reason field appearing on the same line. If we go back to the form at the moment, and we look at this, we have the name field above and the email field below. We want them to appear on the same line, so we're giving them the width 50% classes, and these again are from Tailwind, and that's gonna add them to the same line of the form. And for the other fields in the form, we are simply referencing their names and that's gonna add them in the order that we define here. And finally, we also have a submit button and we've added the CSS classes that we have in index.html. So what I'm actually gonna do here is remove the form elements completely. We don't need that anymore and that's because when we use these layouts in Django Crispy Forms, it's going to take care of rendering the form element itself along with the submit button. We've added the submit to the layout, so that should show up with these classes. Now, in order to use the customized form, what we're gonna do is go back to GitHub, and this is the second approach here, where we use the crispy template tag from Django crispy forms. In order to use that, we can load crispy forms tags into our index.html template. So I'm gonna remove the one at the top here, and we can paste in load crispy forms tags. And then if we go back to the documentation, we use the crispy template tag this time, and we pass the form to that tag, and we can copy that line of code, and underneath the header one, I'm gonna paste that in. If we now go back to the page and we refresh this page, you can see we now have a different layout. We have the name field and the contact reason field on the same line, and we can inspect the DOM here, and we can look at the structure of this. So for example, we have the div with our field, but we have above that the div that contains the flex classes. So Django Crispy Forms, the layout has been translated into DOM elements, and we define that layout in the Python form class. And some other things to note here, we have a button. This submit button has been rendered because it's been added to the layout that we have here at the bottom of this layout. So we have a submit that we've imported from the crispyforms.layout module, and that's gonna take care of our submit button in this form. And also we added a form class attribute to the helper, and we set that to border and padding eight. So for example, I could increase that padding to padding 12. If we go back to the page and refresh, you can see the padding between the form and the border has increased. If we inspect the DOM again, you're gonna see that the form element has those classes added. So the Django Crispy Forms form helper, it's going to define the form for you, it's gonna handle the CSRF token, and it's also gonna render the submit button. And we can define with our layout the order of the fields, and we can also surround those fields in different container classes and make adjustments to the fields from the Python code in the Django form class. And just to finish up here, if we go back to the forms.py file as well as the form class that we have here, we can also change other attributes of the form. So we, for example, could change the submit method from post, which is the default, to a get request. And we can also change the action for the form. So when you submit a form, it goes to a particular URL we could change the default and set that manually here using the form helper. Now I'm not gonna do that, let's just remove these attributes. That's really all we're going to show in this video. And I want to end by saying this is maybe not my personal preference when it comes to defining forms in Django. I don't really like mixing things like classes and div elements that we're defining for layout in the Python code. I think it's better to try and do things like that in the templates where possible. But Django Crispy Forms itself provides some very useful constructs for working with forms and the different template packs allow you to very easily integrate things like Tailwind, Bootstrap and other CSS frameworks. 
So that's all for this video, thanks for watching. We've learned about Django Crispy Forms and Tailwind and how to bring these together to create these forms in Django. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, we have that coffee link in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.